If you're in the market for a budget-friendly wagon for towing, there's a good chance that these two models are on your shopping list, the Holden Trailblazer and the Isuzu MUX. They've both got big grunty diesel engines and big towing capacity to help you get on the open road at an affordable price because not all of us have hundreds of thousands of dollars to bomb on a Land Cruiser 200 series. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to hit the road in these two over the same tracks with the same van behind each of them to see which is the best budget tow bus. Let's get to it. So what van have we got this time around? It's a Jayco Journey Outback. And here are some of the vitals you need to know. Yes, it's a big, big van, but these two SUVs should be up to the task. Both the Isuzu MUX and Holden Trailblazer have three ton braked towing capacity which is not as much as the utes they're based on, but these things are more comfortable. Both models have integrated Red Arc electric brake controllers fitted, and we've got our trusty trailer mirrors teed up so we can see everything that's going on behind us. First up, the Isuzu MUX, which we have in 4x4 LSU spec. Now, we mentioned the brake tow rating is three tons and the total maximum weight permissible for the vehicle and the van, that's the gross combination mass or GCM, is 5,750 kilos. That allows us the three ton van plus the vehicle's curb weight and whatever is left is all you've got to play with. So maybe don't think of loading up all seven seats if you want to tow a van this big. We'll discuss the Trailblazer when we get to it. Now you came here for a towing test, but if you want to know more about each of these vehicles, you can find full detailed reviews at carsguide.com.au where you'll find off-road testing, you'll find seven seat testing, you'll find everything you need to know about each of these vehicles in more detail. But for now, let's talk towing. Probably the first thing you notice when you're towing in the MUX is the amount of engine noise, especially up long, consistent hill climbs, because the engine is working pretty hard. The transmission will hold gears a little bit longer than you might want it to at times, and that does increase the amount of engine noise that comes into the cabin. But generally the engine does pretty well and the transmission is pretty smart. The transmission does do what it needs to do to harness the power of this old truck engine that Isuzu persists with, even as most of the competitors downsize and offer slightly more refined engines. But this engine, despite having a deficit on paper in terms of power and torque compared to the Holden and compared to a lot of its competitors, is a strong engine. It really does work well. Now in terms of ride compliance, the suspension does a really good job of isolating you from what's happening on the surface below the tyres. Now that means that you don't pick up a lot of small bumps and inconsistencies in the road surface. It is quite comfortable. In fact, it's enough to put you at ease with what's happening as you're driving. You will notice a bit of nose to tail shuffling or fore and aft movement as they call it in towing circles, but it doesn't necessarily make you feel like you're out of control of what's happening. It is a really nicely connected feel that you get in the driver's seat of the MUX. The steering offers good feel and feedback and offers good reactions at higher speeds and at lower speeds as well. You can trust what's going to happen when you turn the wheel and you don't have to fight it when you're on the open road. Overall, I just feel like I'm at ease driving this car with this much weight behind it. It is just superb in the way that it copes and the way that it makes you feel as a driver. You're full of confidence, you know exactly what's happening and you don't feel like you're struggling with all that weight behind it despite having lower power and torque outputs than the Holden. Sure, we might see a bit of a penalty at the fuel pump because it doesn't have as much torque, but we'll have to see later in the video, so stay tuned. Now let's talk about the interior because you will spend a lot of time in here if you're gonna tow something like this for long distance. And Isuzu has made changes over the years, improving the quality and the materials that it's put into the MUX and the D-Max ute that it's based on. But I will say this, it doesn't feel overly plush or very modern or contemporary in many ways at all. 
the storage and the smarts is good, but it doesn't make you feel like you're driving anything special. That could factor into your decision when you're choosing a tow vehicle, or it might just be something that you take in your stride. Over this gravel part of our test loop, the ride still comfortable and composed, the steering still trusty. Sure, you can feel a bump and lump here and there, but I'd be surprised if you couldn't. Next up is the Holden Trailblazer, which we've got in LTZ 4x4 spec. Yep, the Holden's tow rating is also three tons and its GCM is 50 kilos lower at 5,700 kilos. It has a slightly better gross vehicle mass, an additional 70 kilos, but it's also heavier in terms of curb weight in this spec. Being heavy is good for towing and the payload is almost identical between the two. There's just a couple of kilos difference between these two models. Either way, you need to keep those numbers in mind as you don't want to be caught out overloaded. What's instantly noticeable as soon as you jump into the Holden is that the ride is just rougher and not as comfortable or compliant generally. There's more bounciness and more twitchiness, especially when there are little bumps in the road surface that you probably don't notice when you're in the Isuzu. You definitely notice them when you're in the Holden. Having said that, there is less of that nose to tail fore and aft pitching and bobbing that you noticed in the Isuzu because the chassis is so much stiffer. Now the steering in the Holden just doesn't feel quite as resolved as it does in the Isuzu. There's more movement to the steering wheel. There's a dead center issue when you're trying to hold it on center. It can be a little bit flimsy as you sort of constantly trying to correct where you are on the road, which is a little bit tiring. Okay, so let's talk about the engine because yes, it's got a huge torque advantage and you can feel that when you are towing something this big. What I will say is that if you appreciate effortless power and the feeling of being able to just put your foot down and move away with less stress and less worry about how much torque you've got to play with, then the Holden does have the advantage in that regard. But the transmission of the Holden is more indecisive. You shuffle through the gears a lot more and maybe that's because it's got more torque and so it thinks that it can use a higher gear to conserve fuel. We'll get to that soon, but it is a little bit frustrating at times because it can mean that it will hunt for a gear when in the Isuzu it was set in a gear and maybe, yeah, it held onto it a little bit too long, but generally it does a really good job of using the torque that it's got. So it's a balancing act and you might like that you've got extra power and torque and that the gearbox is a little bit busier, but for me, it can be a little bit annoying. The Holden's engine is also considerably quieter, especially up gradients that are lasting like the one we're going up right now. You can hear what your passengers are saying even if they're in the back seat, which is an important factor if you are doing a lot of hill climbing with a van in tow and you like hearing what everyone else has to say. You could just pump up the music. It's an alternative, right? Over unsealed roads, the suspension, obviously because it is firmer, it is quite unpleasant, quite harsh over those bumpy gravel sections of road. Now that might matter to you if you're gonna do a lot of Ks on rougher roads, or if you're doing more highway cruising, it might not be that big of an issue for you. Now in terms of the cabin presentation and comfort, I will say that in this particular spec of Holden, you get a lot more features and it is impressively comfortable in here. The seats, while they are a little bit firm, then maybe not as comfortable as the Isuzu, but generally the presentation does make you feel like you're driving something a little bit more special and definitely more modern. 
But overall, I will say this, I've felt more fatigued because I've got to concentrate more in the Holden than I did when I was driving the Isuzu. The Isuzu just had more of a confidence inspiring and comfortable element to it. But the Holden, it just feels like it's more hard work. And over hours and hours of towing something this big, that could wear you down. You might be wondering what the fuel use differences were between these two SUVs on test. Of course, we measured it, but we didn't just compare the two while towing. We also tested them over an identical loop without the caravan, so we had a control figure. Take a second to check out the differences, but keep in mind your mileage may vary. We drove these vehicles to keep up with the speed limit, but you might take it a bit easier which could greatly impact your real-world fuel use. But the Isuzu has an added advantage. It also has the option of a considerably more affordable two-wheel drive version, which would potentially be perfectly suitable for the majority of people out there who might want to hit the open road, but not head off it. If someone was to ask me which one of these two vehicles I would choose to tow something across Australia today, the answer would be, who's paying for the fuel? And that could be the answer for you too, because the Trailblazer was just so much better when it came to fuel consumption on our test. Over the same loop, the Isuzu used considerably more fuel, and that could mean the difference between you choosing that car or leaving it behind. For me though, I would have to stomach the extra cost for the fuel because the Isuzu was just a better tow vehicle overall. Tell us your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to hit subscribe.